Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the lesson of Baruch. Take off the garment of your sorrow and affliction, O Jerusalem, and put on forever the beauty of the glory from God. Put on the robe of the righteousness that comes from God. Put on your head the diadem of the glory of the everlasting. For God will show your splendor everywhere under heaven. For God will give you evermore the name Righteous Peace godly glory. Arise, O Jerusalem, stand upon the height. Look toward the east and see your children gathered from west and east at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that God has remembered them. For they went out from you on foot, led away by their enemies, but God will bring them back to you, carried in glory as on a royal throne." For God has ordered that every high mountain and the everlasting hills be made low and the valleys filled up to make level ground so that Israel may walk safely in the glory of God. The woods and every fragrant tree have shaded Israel at God's command. For God will lead Israel with joy in the light of his glory with the mercy and righteousness that come from him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The canticle will be sung by the choir and the congregation may join. Thank you. 
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of you sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you because you hold me in your heart. For all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Jesus Christ. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Eturia and Trachonitis. And Licinius was ruler of Abilene during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas. The word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's Children's Sermon Sunday, so I invite all children to come forward for a sermon. Let's have a seat down here, shall we? Ah. All boys today, huh? Yeah. Look at that. Okay. So today is a good day to tell you a story about a man who was born about 270 years after Jesus, okay? So Jesus is about 2,000 years ago. This man was born 270 years after Jesus. And you might remember I, I told you a similar story last year about this time. Well, this man's name was Nicholas, okay? So you might remember this, Nicholas. And one day, Nicholas was chosen to be a bishop in the church in the city called Myra. So he became a bishop in the city called Myra. They really needed his help in the church there. He served the church much like bishops serve the church today. You know, we have bishops in our church, and you can recognize bishops in the church sometimes by the special hat that they wear, sometimes by the special staff that they also have as well. That's how you can recognize a bishop. Well, Bishop Nicholas became famous for a lot of different things. He was known for helping sailors who were stuck out in rough seas when there was a storm coming through. And so he was known to help these sailors, keep them from wrecking their ships. But I think the most famous story from Bishop Nicholas is how he was known for helping this father and his three daughters. Interesting that we have only boys up here today. The story is about a father and his three daughters. Now, these three daughters, they were growing up, and they were getting to the point in life where they were wanting to get married and to have families of their own. Well, in those days, for a woman to get married, they had to have a certain amount of money to give to the other family. There's a name for that. It doesn't matter. But that's how it worked back in those days. Well, these three daughters and this father didn't have a lot of money. In fact... They were pretty much poor. They didn't have a lot, okay? So that meant these daughters couldn't get married, couldn't start families because they were poor and didn't have the money. They really wanted to. Well, this was in a town where Bishop Nicholas was serving the church. And Bishop Nicholas found out about this problem for this family. And he wanted to do something to help this family. Also. Yeah, so... You can hear an echo? Yeah. I, don't, I can't correct that right now. Um, so um, to help these girls, Bishop Nicholas, he waited until it was late at night and the family was asleep and he was walking by their house and he noticed that the window was open. And he looked through the open window and he saw stockings that were hung in front of the fire. Stockings are like big socks, okay? They were probably hanging there because they were wet. Maybe they had been washed. They were trying to dry them in front of the fire. Well, what Bishop Nicholas did was he brought with him three bags of gold coins, enough money for them to get married. And he took each of those three gold coins, and he must have been really good, uh, he must have been a good aim, because he opened, through the open window, he took a bag of coin and threw it into the stocking, one in each for each of the three daughters. So... When these daughters woke up the next morning, you know what they found? Money. They found money in each of their stockings. These look like chocolate coins. These look like chocolate coins? Yeah. But they're meant to look like real coins. They're chocolate coins. Yeah, you're right. Um, so, so these girls, these daughters that were growing up that wanted to get married, they could now get married and have families of their own because of the kindness and generosity 
of Bishop Nicholas. Now, Bishop Nicholas, you know, sometimes he later became referred to as a saint. A saint is a hero in the church. So Saint Nicholas, if you've ever heard of Saint Nicholas. And um, I see someone here right now, actually. Who is this I see? Is that? That's a bishop's hat. They call that a mitre. Guys, stand up, stand up. Bishop Nicholas is here. He's got his crozier, and he's got something he's carrying with him. It looks like he's passing out chocolate. Is it gold? Maybe it's chocolate gold. I bet it's not real gold. Of course. It it's works. probably not real gold, but you know what? Yeah, Do you think like some of that chocolate might be for y'all? Uh, yeah. Think. I think no, I think it's for y'all. I think it's for y'all. Go and grab some chocolate. Go and grab some chocolate. I mean some gold. <laughs> and um, I think that Bishop Nicholas will be with us a little while after the service in the, in the narthex. So if you want to get a photo with him after the service, just briefly after, he'll be here for photo opportunities, okay? And we have some more chocolate. If you didn't get chocolate, uh, feel free to join us afterwards. Thank you, Bishop Nicholas, for, for reminding us of what kindness can do in people's lives. Thank you, thank you. Thanks, guys. If you were to look up Advent in the dictionary, it would say something like, the arrival of a notable person, a thing or an event. For us as Episcopalians, Advent is more than a single event. It's instead a season. When we as a church turn our focus on the arrival or coming of Jesus our Christ. And in this season, we are encouraged to think about and we encounter three Advents of Christ. The first that we are working towards in Christmas of Jesus in his incarnation. The second of Jesus in our daily lives. And the third of Jesus in his final coming. So that encompasses just about everything. I mean, Jesus, our Messiah, comes to be with us in humanity. He lives with us each and every day. And he will call us back to himself at the second coming. This is how we start this new church year together, focusing on Jesus coming to us. It happens to be one of my favorite times of the church year. As we enter the season around us where we are increasingly busy preparing our homes for the celebration of Christmas, preparing to receive guests, getting our houses in order, decorating, shopping for family and friends, making grocery lists for meals, which we will use to celebrate together. And all of that doesn't even include some of these last end-of-year tasks associated with our careers and jobs even. Now, it's not for those reasons that I love Advent. No, it's instead because we as a church, we make this counter-cultural statement in the midst of all of the busyness that this season has more to do with preparing for Jesus than for anything else. And while our to-do list may grow longer and the daylight grows shorter for a while in this hemisphere, and we are reminded that there's more work to do, there is more work to do within ourselves to prepare for Jesus' coming yet again. And John the Baptist reminds us every year of this. He reminds us to focus again on transformation and preparation of our own hearts and minds. Luke's gospel, before what we had just heard this morning, it last spoke this about John. The child grew and became strong in spirit. And he was in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel. That's where we are now. We heard that. The word of God came to John son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. 
And John's job description, if you will, comes through in what follows. In the words from the prophet Isaiah, they are included. And they tell us what he's there to do. He takes this role up for himself. That's his calling. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. But how shall this way be prepared for the Lord? What might we be called to do by this forerunner as we prepare for Jesus' coming? He talks about making the Lord's paths straight, filling the valleys, the mountains and hills being made low, the crooked paths being made straight, the rough ways being made smooth. In other words, removing the obstacles that stand in the way so that all flesh shall see the salvation of God. This work that John preached before Jesus begins his public ministry was about removing obstacles that stood in the way of God coming to his people. Much of that preparative work hinged upon repentance, his message of repentance. What is repentance? Well, it's about reviewing one's own actions and feeling a form of regret for wrongdoings that you've identified, but then committing to a new way of moving forward. The Greek word for repentance, metanoia, means literally to change one's mind. John's call to those in the region around the Jordan that day remains our call today. We are to be people of repentance, called to examine our lives, the decisions we make, the things we do and do not do, the things we say and do not say, and to ask ourselves if we are allowing God to work in and through our lives in Christ that began for us at baptism. So you see, this special time of the year, this season of Advent, it's really about interior work. Interior preparations that roll around each year with this reminder from John the Baptist, a time when we can ask ourselves if we are preparing the way of the Lord. Are we making his paths straight, filling the valleys, leveling the mountains, making the crooked straight, making the rough ways smooth? And that can be so many things for us in our lives in Christ. Are we removing obstacles for Jesus to come to us and to those around us? That's what the Advent season is about. And it doesn't happen overnight. It's why we have a season. It's work, and it's worthwhile work. And it may not show immediately, like hanging the Christmas lights or putting up the tree with its decorations, but it's a beautiful time of year amongst the busyness of all we do to prepare for Christmas. It's an invitation to remove obstacles that stand in the way of the Lord so that we are ready when he comes. Amen. I invite you to stand and to join in the Nicene Creed as found in your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to, the, to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son, at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as you're able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's face, God's 
Good morning. Good, morning. Good morning. Welcome to Good Shepherd Episcopal Church on this, well, it was a rainy morning, but I think it's going to clear off a little bit. But thank you for choosing to worship with us here this morning. If you'll take a look at the back of your bulletin, you'll see a list of upcoming events for the week ahead at Good Shepherd. I uh, just want to highlight a few of those. Uh, one thing that's occurring immediately after this service is the Episcopal Church Women Gift Wrapping Workshop. Bless you. And that is in Shepherd's Hall. So um, if you are a woman of the church, you're a part of ECW. So you can um, go to that, is, if I understand all this correct, and learn something about gift wrapping. Um, if you haven't already wrapped your gifts, right? I don't know where you're at with all that. Um, but you, you'll still learn something there. Um, this evening is the Nook Christmas party. Uh, there are some studies that are happening throughout the week which are listed there. I do want to let you all know that we are having our Advent devotional study every Sunday in Advent at 9.15 in Shepherd's Hall. We continued that this morning. Uh, something additional we're going to be doing next week is Episcopal 101. This is for anyone who would like more information about what the Episcopal Church is about, faith and belief of the Episcopal Church, or if you would like a refresher course, or if you are considering or want to consider confirmation or reception, this would be a good course for you. It's going to be a crash course, I'm telling you, because the bishops come in the 26th of January. So we're going to meet twice before Christmas and twice after Christmas, and that starts next Sunday. So if you know of someone interested, please let me know, or if you yourself are interested, so that we can make sure to have enough material for you at that class starting next week. So um, I do want to say that this is also open to some of the youth. So like high school aged or those entering high school, you may want to consider this as well. So this starts next week, Episcopal 101. So I hope some of you will uh, join me for that. If you are visiting this morning, I would like to invite you to fill out a visitor card in the pew back in front of you. You should be able to find that there. Um, also, if you have a prayer request, a confidential prayer request, and you would like me to say a prayer throughout the week, there's a place in the inside for that as well. Just drop this in the offering plate as it comes by, and I'll be happy to take that and pray for that person. I did mention the devotional study, but one of the things we're going through is this particular booklet. The emphasis this year for living well through Advent is practicing peace with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. And so, if you feel like practicing peace is something you should work on, I think we all can work on that, please feel free to pick up one of these devotionals. You do not have to be a part of the study to take one of these home with you. They're in the back in a table in the narthex, so please take one of those. Also available is the 2025 calendars, lectionary calendars, beautiful calendars. They show you everything about the feast in the church, the colors of the church year, and have the readings on the back. So please take one of those with you as well. No charge, a gift from the church. If you have already completed a pledge card, I want to thank you for that. 
Uh, we have had our in-gathering Sunday, but you can always turn in a pledge card. So if you haven't to date had a chance to do that, we have more pledge cards on the table in the narthex. So please consider completing one of those if you haven't done that yet. We still have a gap to close between how much is needed to run the church and how much has been pledged this year. Um, the gap is shrinking and is um, smaller than it was last year, but we can still use your help to fund the work and ministry of this church. So please consider doing that. One more thing, I'll promise I'll be done. In the pew back in front of you, you will also find a flower offering envelope. This is for poinsettias for Christmas Eve. If you would like to donate for a poinsettia to be given in memory or thanksgiving of someone, please fill this out. Uh, drop some money in the offering plate with it, and we will be happy to put that in the bulletin for Christmas Eve. And then you can pick up that poinsettia after Christmas season and take it with you and see how long you can keep it going. <laughs> I'm not very good at that one. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries that you're celebrating this week that we might pray for? Okay, so let me grab my prayer book. All right, let's pray. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants, Joy and Bob, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. 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 Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Bob. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. But hold on, there is one more thing. <laughs> Good Shepherd Episcopal School is selling cocoa bombs. Um, you'll have to Google that if you don't know what that is. Um, but they're selling cocoa bombs just outside the church doors, and that will benefit the church. So please, if you're interested in, well, it's basically like something you put in your mug and you add hot milk to it, and it makes like milk, milk chocolate. So that's what it is. They're selling those to benefit the school. It's a fundraiser. If you're interested in those, orders will be taken after church just outside of the table. Thanks. Sorry.
lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ, and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. gifts of God for the people of God.
invite you to stand or kneel as we pray. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. In the name of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body, because we all share one bread, one cup. Thank you. <clears throat> may the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.